Uh, hello, today we are going to learn about theoretical sampling. Before we proceed, what you must know already, this includes purposive sampling, coding, open coding and axial coding, memo writing and theoretical situations. These are few concepts that I expect that you already know before you learn theoretical sampling. The theoretical sampling was first explained by Glaser and Strauss in the discovery of grounded theory in 1967. It is a sampling technique that is directed by the theory of the theoretical understandings that the researcher grasps gradually while conducting research using grounded theory. The process of data collection is controlled by the emerging theory and at each stage of sampling data analysis inform the researcher about the next step of the sample. In short, theoretical sampling does the following for the researcher to collect data, to code and analyze data such as open coding, axial coding and directing to make further decisions that what to do next, for example, a next set of sample. Theoretical sampling is a tool that generates theoretical insight by drawing on comparisons among samples of data. This data can be anything as required by the researcher such as population, events, timelines, activities, individuals, places, situations and several other types of sample may contribute in the process of analysis while doing theoretical sampling. In other words, in theoretical sampling, you have a space to do triangulation of data sources that finally strengthen your theory. Each time a new set of sample provides you theoretical understanding that is later incorporated to strengthen the findings. What we must know before doing theoretical sampling? We should have a sensitive understanding about potential differences and similarities among a variety of samples of data. This will help us to proceed further in selecting suitable sample. We should choose the data samples that allow us to assign the theoretical characteristics of our research. As the main objective of the research is generating theory, that is, grounded theory, we must be very keen to see how a variety of sample that is related to the particular event or experience see or perceive the understudy phenomena. For instance, data generated in a study of the experience of playing cricket among disabled people might not produce sufficient theoretical constructs if we ignore other participants involved in the many aspects of this experience of playing cricket, such as uh, the disabled person of different age groups, gender, skills variations required to play, etc., and still other participants who may give meanings to their experience that may include the parents or guardians of the individuals, the organizers of disabled persons sports activities, and those who are responsible for designing specific sports equipment uh, for them such as wheelchairs and other equipment. A theoretical sample can provide a variety of related samples that when integrated or theoretical, on theoretical grounds can provide conceptual categories to develop the theory. Now we will see the process. Uh, for example, we are going to study the experience of playing cricket among disabled people. Here I am going to start with a purposeful sample or the very first stage. Uh, this is, uh, these are the individuals with disabilities. And here you have a population and from this population you are going to start with a purposeful sample. Now next step is collecting and analyzing data from the selected sample such as through semi-structured interview guides or other ways. This step will lead to select theoretically directed sample. Means after conducting data you will be able to get another sample that will be theoretically driven. 
Now next step you must watch very carefully as you have to repeat this step several times to select several theoretical samples until you reach theoretical saturation. So here we have a purposefully selected sample. Then we start data collection uh, through different tools such as semi-structured interview guide. After data collection, we do a line by line coding that will help to understand what is happening in the data. Remember, while doing line by line coding, you may have several questions in your mind or you may have some reflections of yourself. So just start writing your memo and record everything that you think can help you to practically understand the data. After line by line coding, you will do a constant comparison because now you have uh, coded all the uh, interview transcripts so you can do a constant comparison. During the constant comparison, don't forget to write your memo. After constant comparison, do an axial coding. This axial coding will give you some theoretical understanding inside of the data and also provide you guidelines for the next sample. And this will lead you to select a theoretical sample for further data collection. And this process will go on until you will reach theoretical saturation. So you may have one theoretical sample and then the process will repeat on and you will get an other theoretical sample and then maybe an other theoretical sample and then a fourth theoretical sample and after that you feel that now that the findings are getting theoretically saturated so at that time you will stop theoretical sampling next after reaching the theoretical saturation that is until no new data appear and all concepts in the theory are well developed researchers will further work to develop the theory now we will learn this this in other lecture. Thank you for watching. Stay in contact for more childhoodreview.com.